Hello, hello. Welcome to an episode of I Like Art Podcast. And I'm really, really excited because today we get to talk to a very special artist. And before I introduce you to her, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. Um, she is a French Canadian multidisciplinary contemporary artist and conservation activist, exploring imagery that is grounded in our identity and reflects our impacts on the environment. Working in public art, painting, sculpture, and installation, she creates art that tells a story linked to community connection, self-reflection, and the restorative effects of nature. So without further ado, I am so excited to introduce you to fellow artist and friend from Canada, Camille Miles. Welcome to the show, Camille. Hello. So glad to be here. Yay. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us on the show. Let's just get started, shall we? Um, Camille, tell us all about your story. So go back as far as you want to go. What was your childhood like? Did you make art as a child? And what age did you know that you wanted to become an artist? So many, so many things. Just go ahead wherever you want to start. Okay, that sounds good. I'll try to rewind my mind. Um, and I think I could start with knowing about being an artist, like just right right away well right away not right out of the womb but um around like five or six I would often go outside with um, paints and paper because my mother um was a watercolor artist yay and she still is yeah she's so so she influenced me a lot and she often told me to go outside and she'd give me paints and things and I would paint landscapes and I, I thought I could like understand the trees you know, and mm. uh, even like uh, feel the wind. So I would I would paint and draw all day. So I kind of knew I was always an artist. And uh, growing up, I won all the like awards at school and high school. I was I got the trophy as like, the best artist in in uh, the high school. So like that, that typical thing. So I just thought it was natural to go into um, art school. So I, after high school, I went to college in fine arts in Montreal. So I'm from originally from Gatineau, Ottawa, so like the capital city of uh, Canada. And then I kind of moved on my own. I was 16 years old in the big wow. city of Montreal. Uh, and I basically almost didn't eat because I would just use up all my money to buy art supplies for school. It was just, it was just crazy. And I learned so much um, there. And then I wanted to continue um, in university. So I did uh, a BFA in uh, fine arts. Um, and I just, just kind of fell in love with creativity. And I was always really good at putting on my own shows and, um, you know, going to cafes, uh, creating my own opportunities, selling my work. Uh, and getting collectors. I wasn't really, after my classes of fine arts, I guess um, I was uh, looking for the typical artist experience of looking for a gallery, uh, waiting to be discovered. And mm -hmm. at that time, oof, 20 years ago now, um, there was no social media. There was mm -hmm. no, you know, websites were really kind of a new thing for artists, but really we were thinking, uh, you'd have to get a gallery and they would create your website or, you know, they would yes. take over your marketing and all that stuff. So when that didn't happen instantly for me, um, I kind of got a, not a little discouraged. I was like, okay, well, I'll get a job. And I started getting, um, like working in um, multimedia and video work. So I always did like a lot of installation video work, which is mm interesting looking at my background now um so I I toured around especially the states and I would just um film and do a lot of filming for companies and, and then come back to Canada and it was very creative but then the person the um person that ran the company was really into conservation so he's a conservation architect and mm. opened this door up for me because we started doing filming exhibitions in museums I really liked that I was like oh should we do tours of uh, museums and exhibits 
oh, this is really great. I really like that because I, I have a, a minor in archaeology. So I love archaeology, all that stuff in the past. So I thought, oh, okay, I love museums. This is amazing. What can I do with this? So I, I went back to school and I did a master's in heritage conservation, which is kind of like protecting old buildings and um, archaeology. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I felt like, okay, this is like a bit of my creative work, but it's more of a passion. I didn't want to go into the MFA route more in the fine arts and creating. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I wanted to find my voice. I didn't feel like my art was where I wanted to be because I needed more like life experience. Mm. So this life experience was kind of the conservation world. So I moved to Italy. Oh, I did not know this. Yes. So I moved to Italy and I worked for um, ECROM, which is like an affiliate of UNESCO in conservation. Um, I was uh, also, I came back to Canada, worked in conservation, and then um, worked on my art on the side. I was always doing art that was very reflective of what was happening in my job world, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like I would go, go out in Canada all over the place and I would do advocacy for buildings that are um, for streetscapes or places of heritage significance and then I I would help uh, the communities out to preserve them so in my art I started to do uh, paintings of vanishing landscapes mm. and, um, like old barns that would be vanishing in the um, a typical landscape or old motels that would just be vacant and I would take all these pictures reference photos and I would create my art so that was kind of an evolution, but I never really saw my, my art as being my career. I always thought this is my conservation work. That's what I should be doing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I, I uh, moved to this uh, really beautiful area here in um, Canada around Georgian Bay. So that's off of Lake Huron. Mm. Um, just north of Toronto and I moved here for my job um, I was working for Park Canada so it's kind of like the National Park Service in uh, the state so it's kind of the same thing and I had kids <laughs> I had kids and um, I have three kids now but you know when you have kids you reassess your whole life mm -hmm. and um, your time your hobbies and I just didn't have time for art anymore like the the time I would have to create or just have fun playing in the studio for just myself that didn't it almost didn't exist um my friends would tell me you know you're an artist yes you're an artist and they would mm -hmm. introduce me that way but I, it's almost like I didn't see myself as an artist anymore I just saw myself as a, as a mother until one day one day my friends sent me an opportunity. It was um, a public art opportunity in our local area. And it was for sculpture. Um, and the town was just putting in a call for proposal. And she sent it to me. Oh, you're an artist. You should do this. It's open for the, like, for local artists. And I looked at it. And I just had my third baby at the time. It wasn't too soon. You know. I've been there. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, and then all of a sudden, it was like magic. Because I, in the middle of the night, I woke up with an idea. What? I have this idea for this proposal. I, I don't know how I'm going to do it. But I think I have a great idea. I'm going to write this proposal. So I just wrote the proposal. I sent it the next day. It was due the next day. I've never written a public art proposal before. I've never done a large scale sculpture, um, but I had this confidence and this idea that things will work out. So, and then I get a call saying, like, the committee loves your idea. They want you to do it. And this was in 2019. And I, I was like, okay, then now 
how do I do this? <laughs> right. So can you explain then, then, could you explain what the project was? Right. Okay. So um our main street here is a place called Kenneth Anglican. Um and they wanted something that was reflective of the heritage and the culture of the town. Um and I had done a lot of research about the town. Um and it's uh so I created this um, public art sculpture. The concept was it was bringing the past, the present, and uh, the future of the town together. And it was on the top of this hill because the town is on, on a pretty steep hill. At the top of Main Street, um, there would be this stainless steel mirrored ball um, held by a stylized paddle. And um, it has also um, some really nice steel elements that are kind of reflective of um, the waterscape here and um, like the natural elements of the area. So the idea was that the pre people would be able to see themselves in this mirror here. And you can see the whole streetscape because of the, the roundness of mm -hmm. the public art. And then um, it was actually on an angle uh, on the base where uh, held by a, a paddle and the paddle was representing indigenous people, indigenous stories and indigenous past of the area mm -hmm. was uh, held, holding up this present. So the ball is the present the, um, and the paddle is kind of the past and it's almost like a hopeful mm. idea of the future so yeah so they really like that it's very kind of abstract but full of meaning and um they said yeah we love it uh and then i i just found uh, a steel manufacturer i happened to know that there was one that worked with artists in public art oh wow and they, they work internationally and they're from this location uh, and they've worked with big, big names. So I just approached them. Hey, I'm a local artist. And I heard a lot about you. And they said, yeah, we'll collaborate with you. We, we want to see great art in our area. So, oh, perfect. This would be a great collaboration. So I worked with them to do this um, public art piece. And it took about like a year for, for it to finalize. And then it was um, put up just before COVID and a big reveal. And at that moment, I saw myself a little bit different. I thought, oh, I, I can see myself do this again. And all it took for me was the idea, the willingness to do it, and the confidence. So I think it's a good lesson for everything in my life, for everything mm -hmm. that we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's building that, sometimes you just need that push or the confidence. Mm -hmm. um, and if something is important to you and you have a good why and you can mm -hmm. share that with other people, then it's, it's easy, easier for people to understand. They, they want to collaborate with you and they, they want to see a project happen as well. If it's of good intent and it's um, significant, you know. Uh, and it doesn't have to be perfect. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but it no. Can I can we pause for a second? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> how did you react when you found out that you got? Did you feel confident like this is going to happen, or were you like, I'm just going to throw the spaghetti against the wall and see if it sticks? And then, how did you react when you found out you got the project? Were you nervous? Scared? Um, like, I like, wasn't oh. nervous. Okay, so. At the time, I was also managing a national park, um, you know, with 55 employees. Oh, wow. And managing, yes, managing millions of dollars in infrastructure um, at the park, right? So I was used to big projects and writing proposals for those purposes, you know, and get money from the government or whatever for an idea. Um, and I always had like, confidence I had to because I, I was kind of like the leader of the group mm -hmm. so when I, I uh, got the yes and the committee was like well we're not sure because you've never done a public art piece before I said I met with them I presented and I said doesn't matter because 
I know how to do things and make things happen. And I was so confident. Yeah. Right. I had no idea. I was sweating so profusely (laughs) and my, my hands were so sweaty, but I, I was like, I have to fake it to make it. Sometimes it's true. You have Mm -hmm. to just like be a little uncomfortable. So I was kind of uncomfortable during this presentation, but I I said, you know, I'm collaborating with this um, um, fabricator that has a lot of experience. I'm going to lean on them Mm -hmm. to help me out. And also uh, we hired an industrial designer. So everything's going to be very sound. Mm -hmm. um, Some of the things they were worried about, for example, for this piece, was the ball actually rolling down the hill, like (laughs) being hit by a car. Oh, gosh. How big is the ball? I I know I'm very familiar with this sculpture. I've seen photos of it. I'll include it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere. Um, Ooh. uh, Was it like 200 centimeters uh, in diameter? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, So it's, it's quite large. It's quite large. And, uh. So I, I was pretty confident, um, but, you know, I just had to convince those people that I could. Mm-hmm. And that was a good lesson for me in the future, like when I did another public art piece, the next one, um, I was able to, you know, say that I had experience. So that was what I was like missing from this world of public art, it's very, uh, it's very small world. <laughs> now mm-hmm. I understand it a little bit. There's, there's a, there's few artists that do it, um, and it's ultra competitive. So if you have opportunities to build, like locally in your own community, um, and start small, then that's, that's the biggest, the biggest thing. Then you can like launch out and branch out to mm-hmm. um, other places. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So you created this sculpture. I want to, I want to clarify one thing is when you had your, your children, you were not home with your children. You were working at the national park, correct? You were managing the park or you were, you were I still was. working, but it was hard to find that time for your art because you had your job and then you have your kids, right? Yeah. So I was working okay. full time, had my kids, but um, in Canada, you have like um, parental leave that is, is about a year for each child. So oh, wow. in between, yes. So in between the children, mm-hmm. I would still always have my job, but then, you know, I'd have mm-hmm. a, a bit of leave when they're really babies and then mm-hmm. put them in daycare and mm-hmm. then work full time. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. We don't have that in the U.S. That's amazing. I'm, I'm a little jealous. Know. It's cool. Okay. So after you created this sculpture, then what happened? I'm just on the edge of my seat. I know I'm familiar with you, but now I really want to know. <laughs> okay. So after, oh, um, I was, so I was more convinced like this, is this the path for me? Um, should I pursue this? Because it made me realize, oh, I'm a real artist. I don't need like to be in a gallery. I just, I just, I can influence not influence but have an impact in this world in a different way and I think what changed for me is when I would visit the public art um, sculpture with my family and the kids would interact with it or Mm -hmm. I get photos I get a lot of photos from people that visit it and um, take selfies send it to me and say oh this is so great I love how the thesis so I was like, wow, you can have an impact in this world in a different way. And you, you can create like limitless opportunities for yourself if you, if you want to. So then I, I decided, well, you know what? I should do another one. Um, and there happened to be like a, uh, a public art call for the town beside that other one. So it's mm-hmm. called Midland. Um, and it was uh, four times bigger as the budget. So I was like, oh. Finally, okay, this is great. So I can use what I did, like the smaller project that I did, and then use it to um, pitch to this other other one. So I guess it's like the baby steps, bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, again, I thought, you know, I love doing this um, on my own, but 
uh, I have three kids. I'm managing a national park because I'm still working full time. Um, I I have an idea, but it would be great to collaborate with another local artist, another mother maybe, um, that would have the same vision and we can talk about it. So I shout out to Holly Archer. <clears throat> She's an amazing artist here locally and we're like about the same age and she has two kids. And <clears throat> I just reached out to her and I said, you don't really know me, but I have this idea and I think like based on what you like and your style um, and uh, what I know about you, you might want to cooperate with me for this. Um, and so we met on Zoom so it was during the pandemic and I pitched her kind of my I, initial idea, you know, can we, can we do something together? Do you think this would make sense? And then we started brainstorming that, that night about these crazy sculpture ideas like what if we did that and that and that and we even sketched out we would sketch out to show each other and I had never met her before right? oh, cool. yeah and sometimes these things just will happen that way and then we had a few drawings we put the proposal together and we sent it out to middle uh, to the town and because I had the experience um and she also had a great reputation locally. Uh, the town was like, yeah, we will, but let's support these two women. And um, we were able to, to collaborate again with the fabricators that I used for the first project. Mm -hmm. Great. And then we made this huge sculpture. So this one is 22 feet high. Wow. And, yeah, it's at the waterfront. Um, so it's called stone and um, so hopefully you can put it in the mm -hmm. show notes so people yeah. can go and check it yeah. out um, basically uh, this area is very highly linked to the logging industry and mm -hmm. there was beautiful forested areas all over but they were all cut down um, in the 19th century early 20th century um, very big business so we wanted to capture that so we and then the, um, the spirit of the area also is very built on the white pine tree. Mm. So somehow we wanted to bring all those things together and talk about, again, this, my theme is like the past, the present, and the future. Um, so we decided to do this uh, seed-like pod in like a mirrored um, form, mm -hmm. stylized form, that you can go under that is held very precariously um, by five wood-like pillars, mm -hmm. so like lumber pillars. And then there's a seedling that's kind of growing from that uh, pod. And it almost, when you look at it like from far, and when we were doing the 3D modeling, it looked like some type of like reindeer a little bit. I'm like, oh, uh, you know what? That's okay if it looks a little bit animal-like. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting for people to, to go. And what's really cool about this sculpture, again, I wanted to play with mirrors, but you can go under and then look at yourself. Yes, um, I've seen it. photos of it. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's so cool. So that's, so that's really fun because now it's a tourist attraction and mm -hmm. like tours start there for the town. Um, and it's something that I really, really like to see almost like every day so mm -hmm. yeah so that's that's the second project and after that project I was like I have to do this all the time <laughs> <laughs> I need to do this I was like why like is it possible to be an artist I didn't even know and then I met other art then I started to meet other artists that were doing it full time I didn't know it was even possible like like seriously I I thought it was more of a myth mm -hmm. that you can become a full-time artist and make a living out of it. So yeah. I, uh, I just decided, you know, um, I was I was burnt out from my job. Um, it was very demanding. Um, I'm with three kids and everything. I was just, I, I need a break, and it's I'm not filling up enough my cup of art. Mm -hmm. So I just leaped into being a full-time artist um just over a year ago now 
Yay. Yeah. All right. And what else you, so you're a sculptor, but what other disciplines or uh, media do you like to explore and create with? Um, I think I love pen eye painting, like sketchbooking um, mm -hmm. with the three kids, especially having a practice that's portable is amazing. Mm -hmm. you, you never know where, you know, you get inspiration or ideas. So I always kind of have a sketchbook around me with some paint, the portable mm -hmm. watercolor palette. And then I, I can sketch wherever I go, or if we're on holidays, it's easy for me to do that. I've always done that. Even mm -hmm. when I was living in Italy, so my best memories of Italy, I have like no photos of Italy. I don't know why, but I have no photos. I have only painting. Oh, wow. So, Amazing. Right. Yeah. So I have, I would go to the Via Appia Antica, which is the, one of the oldest roads, Roman roads, and it's still very beautiful. And I would take I would take so much time just pen art painting. So I guess that practice always continued on for me. Mm -hmm. And then that translates to like more watercolor paintings that are larger and more um, intricate, I guess, and inspired by those. And then I, I do like, uh, I still do like portrait painting um, and caustic work. So I know it's all kinds of things. But one thing about me is that I want to explore. I want to experiment. I feel like a kid all the time if I'm experimenting and I'm not limiting myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I think of those people when I think about like, oh, you have to need sound. You have to be really like focused in your style. And if you want a gallery and all that, well, that's because, you know, if you look at Picasso, completely different styles you couldn't even like he would do ceramics and uh print making and painting and large mm -hmm. sculptures he would do everything and all kinds of styles it's just the mm -hmm. blue period it's, so constantly experimenting i think that's like really healthy and it helps you help inform you know your next step mm -hmm. so um yeah, sometimes I do feel a little scattered and say, oh, I love this so much. I want to try that. Mm -hmm. But I I just go for one thing at a time. So yes. I was was really into encaustic for a long time. Loved the, the smell. I got um, really nice uh, local beeswax. So I would just like, paint uh, in an immediate. It's really fast. Mm -hmm. It's very good when you have small children. Mm. And it, you know, it dries quickly. You can have a composition within like an hour and it's, it's almost, it's, it's done deal. Then, uh, yeah, just painting, even printmaking is just mm -hmm. fun. I love it. I, your work has a unity to it though, because you have your theme and the things that you want to say. So it all works together. And I do think that your work has a freshness to it. And, um, that's probably because you do allow yourself to play and explore and not just stick to one thing. So that's amazing. And I think it's so great to talk to you about this because you're right. We've been told, I think I graduated from art school about the same time as you, but we were told, you know, you had to have your niche, you had to have your style and your voice and do the same thing. Um, and I think it's really great to see other artists just leaning into their creativity in any way that they feel that they want to create. So thank you so much for sharing that. And, um, I'm going to have a question for you. Oh, here's a question. What does a typical day look like for you? Because as a mom with three kids, I am very interested in how you, how you do what you do. Hmm. That's a good one. Um, so of course in the morning, I actually wake up earlier than anyone in my house. So I just can, um, exercise. I try to exercise 15 to 20 minutes a day. Nice. Important. And then I meditate 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be long, just like mm -hmm. five, 10 minutes. And then I write in my journal while I have my coffee and eat. And it's like peaceful. And I need it. I need that like peace break before everyone wakes up. Mm -hmm. Then of course it's like the the run around, the typical mom stuff of like get your 
get me ready, get me ready, ready. Just screaming your head up. No, I don't. <laughs> but sometimes I do. Um, you know, just getting everyone ready out the door. And then I have a home studio, which is more my, I do oil painting right now. I'm doing this series actually um, influenced by my um, some family portraits um, that are really like, very, very personal. I guess they're becoming very, very personal. Um, and that is more like at home in my workshop, I do. Um, mm-hmm. So I do that. And I also I, I have another studio where I am today and it's like the pottery studio so I get to play with clay and I'm hand building sculptures right now for uh, an upcoming exhibition solo exhibition I have um yeah so that's like hopefully I get like a, maybe three times a week studio time mm-hmm. that's how I figured it and then one to two days of admin work mm-hmm. and that like includes like podcast interviews and yes uh looking for opportunities so a big part of what I like to do is going writing for grants mm-hmm. um so I do do that a lot I pitch to I do all kinds of pitching um to other opportunities and just like thinking about how my work in the studio might fit someone or an organization or something Mm -hmm. and um so that's kind of part of my admin work um of course that's like social media Mm -hmm. that does Mm -hmm. like we have to do as artists and I think that's like really important too to say I'd love to connect with um other artists I'm part of like membership well we met through the art queen yes um, and I'm also part of um, Erica uh, B. Hess's, um I Like Your Work um, oh, community. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put a link to that. Mm-hmm. So it's called The Works uh, Membership. And it's, it functions very differently from the art scenes. Um, and we do studio visits with artists mm-hmm. um, every week. And uh, there's all kinds of resources and to more professionalize your practice. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what I've been working on. I've been actually working on, you know, if you want the bigger opportunities and the bigger uh, the bigger things and the exhibitions, public art, you have to book the part, right? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I've been I've been working baby steps towards that to to yes. fulfill more of that big dreaming. Mm-hmm. That work-life balance is hard when you have a family. And um, so I really appreciate you sharing that because I think it helps people kind of figure out how you put the pieces together. And yeah, there's so much behind the scenes that we have to do. And um, yeah, so the admin days are very, very important. But, if- oh, I do I do have to add though about mm-hmm. my family life too. So, you know, during the day I'm focused on like my art career and doing all that stuff. But then I turn it all off Okay. when I'm with my kids. So they come back from school. Uh, I, I could be doing an art class and they actually participate in those art classes. Teaching? And, teaching a class? And, yeah, I yeah. do teach classes for kids. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. really fun. But I make sure that I'm present for the, the kids and I'm not like completely distracted or, you know, it's easy to get distracted even mm-hmm. in the evening. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I, I just try to ground myself and just be there. Um, and those little moments in life. Are just so yes. Yeah, that's good. You're a good mom. You're doing a great okay. job. If you had advice for someone who wants to try a new creative endeavor, what would you tell them? And my the purpose of my podcast is definitely not to turn um, everybody into a professional artist. That's not why I'm mm-hmm. having you on the show. I think your story is so amazing and exciting and interesting, but what if somebody, you know, even when you were working in the parks, you maintained your art practice, or you still prioritized your creativity. 
What would you tell somebody who thinks they might not have enough time or they don't want to do it, but because they don't want to monetize it or, but they're still feeling like they want to be creative. What would you tell them? I would say, um, always have a sketchbook or a journal or something, uh, that you can write in and to capture uh, your ideas. So Mm -hmm. I am a big believer in just the power of your own thoughts and that every good piece of art, I guess, comes, um, starts with a thought mm-hmm. even the thought of just wanting to paint splashes paint on canvas that's still an idea and an initial thought uh an initial idea for an installation or connecting with your community or even just like any business idea or project you want to do it's just have it in your mind write it down it, you don't have to execute it right away Mm-hmm. You know, if you can, you can press pause if you want, you, you can just have it in the back of your mind. Maybe it'll creep up and, um, like just nudge you again mm-hmm. and again. And don't be afraid to just jump right in. Don't worry too much about how. So I think that's what's cool sometimes about my story and where I'm now is that I didn't know how. I was going to do all this, but I found like the right people to collaborate with. Mm -hmm. Um, If I didn't know how to do something, like for example, I hadn't done clay sculpture since like, I think it was, I think it was probably um, art school. So maybe 20 years ago and I'm doing a whole body of work now in play sculpture why because and I don't even have a kiln at home I went and I just talked to other artists locally said I'd love to do some clay sculpture I took some classes here at a local pottery studio got really more comfortable said yes this is the medium I want to do right now and then I jumped right in and asking for help and the right people said yeah I want to help you I can I have this idea. How do I execute it? And then they would just show me how to execute Mm -hmm. it. Right. So you don't, you don't have to know exactly. You can learn. Yeah, absolutely. You, you've talked about this on the podcast before. Yeah. Right. So you can learn. You've never, you never knew how to do a podcast. So you just created one Mm -hmm. and you figured it out. I'm kind of the same way. So I, I like to, you start with a great idea and your why like why do you want to do that mm-hmm. and then you just you find the right people that want to help you you know and your your skills and what you're most um affiliated with or mm-hmm. things they'll just come up naturally you'll want to spend more time doing the thing you love and creating a sense of flow in yes. your life if you do that you know Mm -hmm. I love that. That's so good, Camille. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think it's going to give some people some encouragement and give them something to grab onto and take on after they listen to the episode. There's so many things I want to talk to you about. One thing. Okay. I do want to talk to you about your current series, your crying landscapes. Tell us all about them. Tell us about your collaboration with PXP Contemporary and how people can purchase these beautiful pieces. Um, just give us all the info. Sounds good. So Crying Landscape um, came to me uh, when I was doing an art residency in June 2022. So I was on Vancouver Island, um, close to the town of uh, Victoria and British Columbia, Canada. Mm -hmm. And I was at this residency for two weeks without children, just on my own. It was amazing. But I would take a lot of time to do the things I love, like uh, semi-painting and hiking. So I do a lot of of those things. I love nature and I get inspired by it. So I went and I started touring Vancouver Island and it was, crazy the deforestation of old close forests i it never really struck me from you know i'm east of canada right and 
I didn't really understand uh, the impact on the environment and the landscape that um, happens. So I toured around all these logging sites. And after doing that, and I did like a whole day of doing that, came back to the residency and I was physically ill. I was mm. so sick. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling so sick. I need to go to the water. So I went to the water um, and I, um, I, was, I was moved. I wanted to clean my paint. And all of a sudden, I saw the landscape starting to cry in a way, in the way I was doing um, the water and the, and the painting. I said, well, this is something. And I feel much better, but I feel like the landscape is telling me something. I went back to the studio and I just painted, painted, painted. And I had brought UPO paper, mm -hmm. which is, it, it kind of, if you put water on it, it doesn't dry right away. Mm -hmm. It takes like a whole day, right? So it has this really interesting unexpected feeling about it mm -hmm. that oh this matches really well this idea that the landscape is crying so I moved the paper um, you know put the um, the paint on move the paper and let it dry and see what it did the next day and it, it made these like beautiful um, paintings that are really like calming and hopeful but at the mm -hmm. same time um, like they have depth and very like calmness and quiet, I would say, but they're saying something. Mm -hmm. so, oh, they're beautiful. So, thanks. And so I, I came back to, uh, to um, my area in Georgian Bay and I decided to do a pop-up show with the, um, with the other artist, Holly Archer, that I did the sculpture with. So she had a series that was kind of similar-ish. So we decided to collaborate again because it's easier to collaborate on these mm -hmm. things. Did a pop-up show and the the show like sold out. It was so great. People That's so there. awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. So we had a great off um, turnout, and then the series was featured in a an art scene magazine as well. And I just pitched it to um, TXT Contemporary Alicia. Mm -hmm. I have a relationship. I've been developing a relationship um, with the uh, director, and I decided to, you know, say like, "Hey, do you, you like these? You know, mm -hmm. do you want to?" And at, at first, um, back in the summer, she had told me, "Oh, I'm way too busy. Could you follow up with me later?" And then what I decided to do is, like, I didn't say to myself, "Oh, that's a new. She doesn't like." No, I'm gonna do what she said and follow up with her later, which I did in the fall. And she said, "Oh, I'm so glad you followed up." Followed up because a lot of artists would not have. And mm. let's let's feature you and let's have um, have you um, launch a collection in January. So I was really fortunate to to have that opportunity, and now you can purchase these crying landscapes uh, with TXT Contemporary directly from their website. I know. And I will put a link to that because I believe that my listeners are going to be so curious and want to see. And I know that some of them have sold. So it's exciting to, to see them. And if anyone's interested, they better snatch them up while they're here. So yay. And that's wonderful. And I did have a chance to interview Alicia on, um, on the podcast. So I'm also going to put a link so that people can learn more about PXP Contemporary and how that process works and what it's like to purchase from an online gallery like them. And they're so amazing. Alicia does such a wonderful job and um, what a great partnership. I was so excited when I saw you launch your collection with them and oh, I was like, this is amazing. This makes so much sense. And I'm so excited for you. Thank you. Okay. And I also got to meet you, Camille, through my online course, How to Create Amazing mm -hmm. Workshops, Classes, and Events. And you were one of my students in the first round. And I just want to thank you so much for trusting me and taking that leap of faith and taking that course with me. And since then, it's been really, really fun seeing you continue to offer your workshops, classes, and events. Are there any coming up that you want to talk about? Would you have plans for this year? to do something to offer those types of things? Well, 
thank you for the class because really it did open um, a lot for me, I guess. And I think um, how your methodology of um, creating art events and just your experience, it was just easy to jump or feel like confident to jump right in. So when um, in my community, I started to become, I don't want to say, I don't want to say I'm famous because <laughs> I don't think I'm famous, but let's say people know me as an artist now and mm -hmm. largely because of the exhibitions I'm doing and also mostly because of the public art. Um, so a lot of people were coming to me and, oh, are, do you teach this? Do you do that? Do you do these workshops? Well, I could, and maybe this is a good idea. So why not jump right in? But I really didn't know how, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I'm like, that, that, that usually doesn't stop me if I don't know how. Um, I'll train myself. And so that's why your course was really um, great to know like the how. Mm -hmm. And now what I really wanted to do is a hike and paint experience. And because that marries my love for like painting and hiking and nature. Um, and bring that uh, that type of event or that feeling, especially to women um, in a communal you know, way. I think that's like really powerful. So I start. I did. I launched my first one. I did like a pilot in the fall. It was amazing, and I didn't even know how I was gonna get the money for the materials because it's you know it's expensive to start off these events. So I kind of just pitched it to a organization and I said, oh, I'm doing this. And it's like a community, like kind of a women's wellness thing. If you're thinking about it that way, um, almost meditative in that nature, forest bathing. And we also do um, plena painting. And I'd like to teach that, but you know, what if you sponsored it with your, you know, with, material for my cost of materials and they said yeah we'll give you the money plus we'll pay for everyone to be there for free oh my goodness oh. I love it <laughs> right so it was like unexpected but I talked to the right person and I said yeah okay great so now I'm all equipped to do it again in, in the spring so I'm looking forward to, to offering more hikes and paint events in our there's a local um, nature preserve here that is like a perfect experience for that type of thing. I also, once a month, I host um, paint night. Yay. Um, yeah, at the local gallery. And that's a collaboration with the local gallery. And one thing I like about those that I'm doing a little bit differently because um, I'm not necessarily showing like, this is your piece, this is how you're going to do it. And, uh, you know, take this brush, this type mm -hmm. of paint. So it's more of um, you get inspired by an artist. So I usually have like a theme with an artist and um, you reinterpret what you'd like to do inspired by your own imagery, your own photograph. And I show you how, what you want to achieve. So mm -hmm. we're playing with experimentation and we're, we're playing with all these concepts and the theories of art and, and, you know, composition, color, and all those things. But I'm trying to make it a unique experience that is, you know, not full of comparison. You know, when you mm -hmm. do all the same things, yes. sometimes you're like, oh, that's better than mine. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. I don't want that. I just want to say there's no mistakes. Uh, it's all about experimenting, being in the moment, being a little uncomfortable with your painting sometimes, but mm -hmm. then figuring it out on your own. And I think that method was really um, showed up in my art classes for kids. So I'm doing art classes for kids as well, mm -hmm. twice a week after school. And that is the most important lesson that they've given me is that they're not afraid to experiment. Mm -hmm. they're not af there's no mistakes, right? You must know this because you've done a lot with kids. Oh, it's the best. It's, it's so inspiring. Yeah. Yes. It. Yeah. They just don't care. So they don't care. Yeah. So I, I think that was my portal talking. Oh, this a <laughs> Facebook portal in my studio. I have no oh, clue why. Okay. okay. I'm just talking randomly. 
Um, yeah, so I think that's one of the important lessons from mm -hmm. uh, the art classes for kids that then informs other events. Like, oh, you know, let's not make it um, all the same and full of compare because when you're an adult, we all tend to do that. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. I'm not. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm not an artist. I'm not doing that enough. And this is it. I'm not enough. I'm not but definitely a mom, you know, yeah. whatever yeah. it is. Who cares? Just do your thing. Mm -hmm. And if it's not the greatest, it doesn't matter. You've never painted before. Well, is it going to yeah. be a masterpiece? No, it, right. wasn't, it wasn't going to be anyway. Yes. Right? So, we learned so, so much not? from creating with kids. And I think that is, yeah, it's how free. They're just so free. I love that, Camille. So thank you so much for sharing all of that. And okay, what are you up to now? What do you want to share that's coming up for you? Uh, it says the end of 2022. Whoops. Um, this year in 2023. What do you want to, what do you got going on? Well, I think two major things I'm working on right now. Um, I got into an art residency for March which I'm really excited about. Yay. But with, yeah, with my kids. Now, so shout out to this residency. Um, it's called Mothra, M O T H R A. Oh. Um, it's on Toronto Island at Arts Street. Okay. Can so, you send me the um, link to that? I'll send you the link. Okay. Um, and it's a great residency you can do. They have um, all kinds of, uh, so you're not there alone, you're with other artists, but what's really interesting for other artists with their children oh cool I love yeah, that so so my kids are coming with me and we already have an idea that we're going to collaborate do this art project together mm -hmm. and we collaborated on a theme and what we want to do so we'll see how that goes um but yeah I think it's going to be an amazing experience and then I also am working um lot in the studio because I'm I have a, uh, my first big solo show in a gallery uh, in uh, the end, end of June um, early July at uh, the Midland Cultural Center um, mm -hmm. at Quest Art Gallery so nice that's what I'm, I'm working on that so that's going to be a big installation um, and sculpture full of the clay things I'm doing right now I love it Oh, you're going to have a great year. I can already feel it. How? Okay. Oop. Next question. Name a dream. You, you've you collaborated a lot, but what would be a complete dream collaboration or project for you? Uh, and that, I, I saw your question. I, uh, I had like almost like a, a list of things that I was dreaming about, but one of the things I've done before just for myself before my my first daughter was born I had uh, created a book and it was just for my family and close friends um it was a children's book oh you know maybe in the future I should I should actually create a book mm, yeah I don't know what it would be um so I'm thinking about what well, you know a dream collaboration putting it out there it could be a book like a the art book that's mixed with stories and that could be really cool and another one is like I'd love to do another big public art sculpture somewhere mm. um yeah because since I was a little girl I always love to visit places with public art I have so many photos and even on my website under my about page You'll see a little version of me when I was maybe eight or nine in, in front of a, a sculpture. And it was, but that's been a recurring thing. So I have to continue things in the future, but those projects are usually, it takes a few years to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I love that. I'm excited. Okay. Can we do a rapid round of questions? Let's do it. Okay. All right. Top of mind. Absolutely. No judgment here, Camille, because we just want to know the most important things <laughs> as if everything you said wasn't important, but now we're getting down to the serious stuff here. So first question is what is your favorite color? 
Oh, teal. Let's teal? say. Teal? Yep. Teal. Okay. I was going to guess blue, but teal would be a close second because you use that yeah. teal in your work. Yes. I love I teal. I That's a good one. Okay. So we get our ideas and inspiration in different places or doing different things. Some people get their ideas while they're in the shower. I get mine while I'm driving around alone in my car. Where do you get your creative ideas and inspiration? Where does it strike for you? Oh, good question. Usually in the morning, walking in the woods mm -hmm. sometimes, but um, in the car is a big one because we're often in the car as moms. Mm -hmm. And then I, I do have an idea or, you know, it's, it's the movie in the background that I almost tune out and then mm -hmm. I just think of whatever mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll have an idea. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, that's good. All right. Studio beverage of choice for you. Coffee. Coffee. Yeah. I love oh, coffee. Yeah. More. For how sure. much coffee do you drink? Okay. So I did live in Italy, right? So I got addicted to coffee, <laughs> to really good coffee. Nice. And, yeah. So during the pandemic too, my husband and I did get like a really nice machine. So we do have espresso mm. and it's just, just an Americano. Um, so it's espresso with hot water and that's okay. like coffee. So I do have three. Yum. I love yeah. coffee. It's so good. Okay. Do you have a book or a movie mention that you want to bring up? Ooh. Um, well, I've mentioned it before. Big magic. Was, mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, Elizabeth Gilbert, I think is really good. So when I did, um, leave my full-time job um, and I was getting into becoming a full-time artist and understanding the power of ideas I did um, listen to that audiobook a lot in my studio and it helped a lot mm -hmm. so, it was really so good, good. So good. I, I love that book who did I talk to oh Elise joking in on the last episode interview and she said that she reads it once a year and I'm like oh that's a good idea that's pretty smart okay yeah. next question is oh it just left my brain let me think for one second book or movie mention um do, do, do. help me out Camille if you listen to my podcast what am I missing here oh oh I know what it is this this question always shocks me and I never ever know what someone's gonna say so it makes it even better but if you could be good at something that you're not but wish you were, yeah. what would it be? For me, it's volleyball. I wish I was a good volleyball player, but not coordinated at all. So it could be sports. It could be anything. Something that you're like, oh, oh I really wish I was good at blank. Oh, you know, maybe like acting Ooh. or like in plays or something. Because my, my husband is like, he, he loves community theater always been like an actor but he has awesome memory so I don't know it would like stress me out I have dreams about being at the theater and forgetting all, all the lines but I've never even been in a play you know what I mean mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I know I don't think I could do that I wish I could mm -hmm. and remember um but I that would be a really cool thing to be able to have this memory mm -hmm. and then this confidence in front of huge group maybe that would be better for me in public speaking in the future yeah I don't know. Yeah. well you'll figure it out I'm sure someday you'll do it right why maybe. not oh why I not? love it I, if anyone can figure it out it would be you so that's amazing okay last couple things how can we support you what is the what are some ways that you felt supported in the past that have really meant a lot to you and how can we support you moving forward because we really want well, to Oh, that's nice. Um, I love connecting online with people and even people I don't know mm -hmm. that connect with my art for sure, or even have a conversation about my art that I'm always open to that. That's always great. Of course, if people would like to become a collector and um, to, you know, support a, a rising artist, why not? You know, I have a shop on my website 
for Camille Miles uh, Art. Dot com mm-hmm. so there's there's always some stuff that are kind of revolving um mm-hmm. that I periodically see updates and I change it up so it's always different mm-hmm. so I have that yeah and maybe like when once one thing that's really powerful for artists um if you're listening to this then you know a shout out on social media it's like a big hug mm-hmm. <laughs> I see it that way where it's like oh you know I heard this um, interview I'm following her and you should too or something like that mm-hmm. to your friends that's always nice and um, it helps people grow and yeah. continue I know and that's huge especially now with I know Instagram the algorithm makes it harder and harder for us to to grow our accounts and our audiences yeah. and any share any comment any interaction like that really really helps what social media platforms are you on and what are the tags, the handles so we can find you? All the links will be in the show notes, but. Yeah. If you want to follow me on Instagram as well as uh, I have a business page on Facebook, but yeah, Instagram is um, where you'll find me. It's at Camille Miles Art. So it's all the same. And I started the account just like more seriously just over a year ago so I'm still I feel like I'm still super new to mm-hmm. Instagram completely um but having like a background in video and it's helping me a little bit in marketing yes. oh your videos are so good your reels are so good and oh, you're really oh. yeah you do such a great job on Instagram it's so it's so fun to watch you and see what you're up to and I think you do a really really good job of um posting consistently and showing up and telling your story and all of that. Oh, so thanks. highly recommend everyone go check you out on Instagram for sure. So thank you. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to share? Is there some kind of advice that you would want to give our listeners, whether they're an artist or they're somebody who's interested in being creative? What's one little tidbit that we can end this uh, conversation with and leave our listeners with today? I think the overall theme maybe is like forget about how. Don't worry about the how so much. Sometimes we get caught up. We want to be perfect before even doing something because we don't know how to do it. You can always learn it. You can always learn it and find your groove. If if something is appealing to you, just, just jump right in. Yes. And you'll see things will, will place. It's going to be like a, a puzzle. You don't know what the image is actually going to look like, but it's like the little bit that help to see the bigger picture. I love that. (laughs) I love that so much. Thank you so much, Kami. This was wonderful and such a beautiful conversation. I know my listeners are going to love it. And I hope everybody goes to check out your work and your Instagram and, um, you know, sees everything that you're about and get connected, um, to you and all that. So thank you again. Thank you so much for being here today. It was awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I cannot wait to see what you create in the future and to support you. And um, again, thank you so much. And thanks everyone for listening and tuning in to today's episode of I Like Art Podcast. I'll be back next week and um, stay, stay classy. No, that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> right, man. Everybody have a great day. Thank you so, so much for being here. And thanks again, Camille. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.